He's been marked as Formula One's next superstar for a while now. And Max Verstappen is starting to live up to the hype. The young gun able to win races, others can't. On the big stage, when, when the pressure's on, he has that ability to deliver. The Dutchman has proved a big hit with fans. And his rise to the top of the sport has been swift. Trained by his father, Jos the Boss Verstappen, Max has been hardwired to be the best and shows no fear when chasing down rivals. Red Bull has since built its top team around him. And its new Honda partnership is expected to be a big step forward. But will it be enough to fulfill his destiny? It's a Max Verstappen special on the inside line. Fast and freakishly talented, Max Verstappen was a superstar in the making from the moment he debuted at just 17 years old. The precocious Dutchman has now become a fixture in Formula One as the lead driver at Red Bull Racing. And despite his youth, he is already one of the sport's biggest box office draw cards. And Verstappen's nation is behind him. A sea of orange following him to almost every circuit, the Dutch willing him on at every turn. They adore him for his vast natural talent, his razor-sharp overtakes, and his relatability in what he likes doing both in and out of the car. Winning races in Formula One, which also makes me happy, is winning games on FIFA. It just depends on what kind of things you're looking at. And that competitive streak runs very deep whether he's in the simulator, playing FIFA on PlayStation, or sparring in the gym, Verstappen embodies the hyper-motivated new breed of Formula One drivers, with plenty still to prove and a real hatred of one thing. Losing. We just keep it simple. Losing for everything, it's, it's the worst, yeah. But while Verstappen's potential is beyond doubt, with a handful of Grand Prix wins to his name, He's still yet to reach his ultimate goal, the Formula One World Drivers' Championship. And it's not for lack of trying, the Dutchman doing the maximum possible, while Red Bull Racing attempts to match benchmark Mercedes, its partnership with Honda a step in the right direction. You always try to do the best you can anyway, so I don't need particular goals to, to motivate myself because every race for me is a, is a chance to win. Um, some, of course, are better for us than other tracks. Away from the racetrack, Verstappen can relax, safe in the fact that he's financially independent, and his deal with Red Bull, which extends to the end of 2020, is worth upwards of 25 million US dollars a year. And he's not even close to his peak, with his values set to skyrocket if and when he becomes world champion. And top drivers like Mercedes Lewis Hamilton and Ferrari Sebastian Vettel reportedly earning around double that. Both of whom have limited years in F1 left, setting up a likely bidding war on Verstappen's services from 2021, should Red Bull not deliver. As long as they want you, they will, they will come for you. But at the moment, um, you know, I'm at Red Bull and I'm very happy there as well. So uh, there is no, no need to change that. Max Verstappen! For now, Verstappen is keeping his powder dry, but should he get into a consistent race-winning car, the young Dutchman will be unstoppable as his considerable depth of untapped talent is finally mined. It's a mouth-watering prospect for F1 fans, let alone Red Bull Racing team principal Christian Horner, who acknowledged in 2017 what a talent his young driver was becoming. 
on the big stage when when the pressure's on he has that ability to deliver and i think you know he's still evolving and developing as a as a driver and as a young man up next we're back to where it all began for max verstappen in go-karting Max Verstappen is one of Formula One's most promising stars, having taken the sport by storm since his debut with Toro Rosso in 2015. The Verstappen name is a familiar one to motorsport fans the world over, with Max's father Jos the boss, who started 106 Grands Prix from 1994 to 2003, including drives with Benetton, Stewart, and Arrows and his influence even to this day cannot be underestimated. Well, my dad and I were really close, you know, we did everything together in go-karting, so for sure my dad was a big role, but at the end, you know, you have to do it yourself in the car. And while Jos didn't win a Grand Prix, he has helped to shape his son's career at all levels, not just in terms of his racing style behind the wheel, but also in sidestepping the issues that befell him. He also ensured he had an innate feel for finding grip in all conditions, a supreme advantage for the young racer. As a father, I think you want to help your son uh, always as good as possible. But I think in, in the years before, I, I tried to, to push him in the right direction, what I have done. But there's no doubt that despite their close friendship now, Jos pushed his gifted son very hard to be the total package. Just ask Max the best piece of advice he ever received. Stay with two feet on the ground. Yeah, otherwise he will make sure I will be, so. <laughs> Verstappen, who was actually born over the Dutch border in Hasselt, Belgium in 1997, was bitten by the racing bug at an early age, even pushing his father to get started earlier than the F1 journeyman wanted. At four years old, I was on a go-kart track and I saw somebody driving. He was even younger than me. So um, I called my dad and I said I wanted to have a go-kart, but he, he said no, he wanted, to, he wanted me to start at six. But then after I kept pushing to have a go-kart and uh, I finally started when I was four and a half. And it was to be an incredibly quick journey to the top. Some drivers spend years getting to Formula One. Others take the fast track. Like 2007 F1 world champion Kimi Raikkonen, Max Verstappen had a very short career in the junior categories. And like all the modern F1 drivers, the Dutchman got started in go-karting, which is where he learned his racecraft and earned two European titles and the karting world championship in 2012. It's always a, a nice feeling to, to come back into a go-kart. Verstappen spent just one season in junior cars, but immediately showed his talent with 10 wins in European Formula 3. One more than title winner Esteban Ocon, who would become an enduring rival. And even before his 2014 European F3 season was done, Jos was keen to see his son try his hand in an F1 car. Of course, uh, I want to see him one day. I want to see him in, in a Formula One car. I think that's where we have worked for very hard. Um, and then when he made the jump to, to Autosport, I think uh, uh, he did an unbelievable job uh, this year uh, in the Formula 3 Euro Series where he won seven races so far. Um, I think he has the natural talent. And now it's, uh, you know, now he has to, to, to develop himself to, to come into Formula One. However, there was no doubt on whether Verstappen would get his debut. The question was when. With an option for a Mercedes test role for 2015, potentially forcing him into another season in F3. Red Bull, though, gave him what he wanted, a race seat. With its B-team Toro Rosso, the brand's ruthless motorsport consultant, Dr. Helmut Marko, waxing lyrical about this precocious young talent. Oh, we had been in contact with Max and Jos Verstappen for quite a while. Uh, 
it was a surprise how quickly he adapted to Formula 3. And the moment where I thought that something really special was at Norris Rink when he was in mixed conditions, it was more wet and dry, per lap two seconds and more quicker than anybody else. And Verstappen was about to redefine the standard for F1 rookies. Up next, we'll look at Max Verstappen's meteoric rise, racking up a string of firsts in F1. In mid-2014, Max Verstappen was announced as a Toro Rosso driver for the following year, replacing Frenchman Jean-Éric Verne, but Red Bull had its reasons for the early news. I think nearly every top Formula 1 team was in one or another way behind Max. But why we are announcing it in the middle of the season is to make an end to all these speculations, to give him a really good prep preparation for next year. It also ensured that Verstappen would become the youngest ever driver to start a Grand Prix at just 17 years and 166 days. The move was controversial though, with teams, media and fans saying he was too young. But neither the squad nor Verstappen was phased. I will do a lot of training from now on uh, to be prepared for, for the big step. And um, yeah, I think the age doesn't really matter. I think he has an unbelievable speed. He is, for his age, very mature. And he is a hard worker, so he has all the necessary integrants you need to be an absolute champion. Verstappen looked immediately at home in the car and against another F1 rookie, Carlos Sainz Jr., son of the World Rally Champion and Dakar winner, Carlos Sainz Sr. Yeah, like Carlos and me, we, it's our, both our first season, so uh, that will be interesting, you know. Uh, Carlos has proven you know, he's a very fast driver, so uh, I think it will be an interesting year. Across the first season, Verstappen gained the upper hand and outqualified the Spaniard 10-9, including in five of the last seven Grands Prix. He also scored 31 more points, 49 to 18. But Verstappen bedazzled the paddock far more with a series of stunning passes that were brutally effective, his signature moves setting him apart. Arguably, his most audacious pass was in Belgium that year on Saba's Felipe Nasser around the outside of fearsome corner Blanchemont. And Red Bull wasn't about to leave him out in the cold in terms of moving up, unless it was for a promo run in Kitzbühel, Austria. A new year brings fresh challenges, and Red Bull B-Team Toro Rosso kick-started 2016 with the launch of its new STR11 in the circuit to Barcelona Catalunya pit lane ahead of pre-season testing. The squad was also very happy with its driver lineup, especially given the progress shown by Max Verstappen in his debut season. Max has learned last year very fast he has learned because he has a very, very high level of natural speed. Uh, this natural speed is coming uh, from his skills and P also from the work his father did with him in karting because uh, this helped him for sure uh, to come to this level. And uh, I am real, real convinced that uh, he will have a, a great career in front of him if he's at the correct time in the correct car. Verstappen started his sophomore campaign with three points paying finishes from the first four races, but knew he had to keep the pressure on to maintain that momentum moving forward. We were very pleased with the competitiveness of the car in qualifying for sure, but uh, we still have to work for sure in the race as well, you know, to keep that, to keep that position, that's for sure.
And while Verstappen's frustration at not running at the front was growing, things were happening behind the scenes to promote him in season to Red Bull Racing. Red Bull wanted to lock the Dutchman into a longer term contract, while Daniel Kvyat was struggling at the brand's top team, which in the end enabled a swap for the Spanish Grand Prix. Well, of course, I know what they have done in, in the history of Formula One. Um, they're very competitive and uh, I'm also a very competitive person, so hopefully it's a, a perfect match. And Verstappen reigned in Spain, winning on his Red Bull Racing debut. After the two Mercedes collided in one of the most dramatic crashes of the season, the Dutchman keeping Ferrari's Kimi Raikkonen behind on aging rubber for 32 laps, he had arrived. And it was an incredible moment for both him and his family. My dad was, I think he was crying and uh, yeah, he was incredibly happy. I mean, uh, best result for Dutchman as well. My dad finished twice third, so now, yeah. Incredible achievement from, uh, if, yeah, from I think our side, I would say, because he helped me a lot, uh, also in, in the beginning of my career up until Formula One, and uh, I think without him, I wouldn't have won to, today. But with Mercedes the dominant force, Spain was his only win that year. Six additional podiums for a total of seven, some consolation, before two more victories in 2017 in Malaysia and Mexico. Those race wins were the major highlights of a tough 2017 campaign in which he had six DNFs, five from the first nine, making for a frustrating time at the squad. It was a very challenging season, you know, a lot of retirements, some, you know, bad luck involved because of it. Um, so that was not very nice, but uh, I think the most important thing was to, to stay positive and like keep working hard to at least try and get a good result, even if on a Sunday, you know, a lot of things happen. But, yeah, lately it seems like the luck has turned a bit and uh, I've been enjoying it more. But it was about to get worse before it could get any better. After the break, we look at Verstappen's nightmare start to 2018. There's no doubt that Dutch young gun Max Verstappen loves being part of Red Bull Racing and all the fun that being a part of the greater brand with its gigantic marketing budget provides. Together with teammate Daniel Ricciardo, from 2016 to the end of 2018, the pair got to try their hands at American football, European ice hockey, Brazilian foot volley, and even playfully destroyed caravans while they cut some laps on the Red Bull ring. On the racing itself, of course, you're very serious, but off the track, yeah, we can have a laugh, and for sure, you know, it's, it's a good, good harmony between us, so, uh, yeah, very happy with that. And uh, I think today showed it again. Uh, we were definitely laughing what we were doing out there. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a good teammate to have. But the laughing stopped at the start of 2018, with Verstappen involved in crashes and incidents at each of the first six races. In certain cases, maybe just the momentum, which is a bit disturbed. So I just need to, yeah, get that momentum back, which I had at the end of last year. And I think once you get into like a positive spiral, I would, I would call it, I think then, yeah, everything just comes together a bit more. And at the moment, it's just not, like there are good bits and, and bad things happening at the same weekend. So it's just not been like a clean weekend yet. And um, we'll try to, to have that positive weekend. It was a difficult time for the Dutchman. Worse than 2016, when other drivers complained that he was defending under braking, forcing the sport's governing body to react and clarify the rules. But while Ricardo won in China and Monaco, Verstappen finally delivered for the team on its home soil in Austria, securing the brand's maiden win there. Amazing support and a great motivation for me as well. So. Yeah, of course, happy then to be on the podium, but then, of course, to win the race made it even better. And the Dutchman realized the enormity of his achievement. I think it's always important to win, but, yeah, to win at, at the Red Bull ring, at, I think, as a team, you know, with a Red Bull car, um, it was amazing. I think it's the best one to win in, in the season for me, so, uh, 
yeah, really happy. Uh, the big boss Dietrich was also here, so um, yeah, everybody wa was here to 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 see the podium. So uh, yeah, very happy. With that. It was his third straight trip to the podium, a streak Verstappen improved upon to end the season. His win in Mexico, part of five straight to the season finale at Abu Dhabi's Yas Marina circuit. But the team still craved more than sporadic success. The departure of Ricardo to Renault in 2019 gave Verstappen clear number one status within the team. But 2019 also saw Red Bull move away from Renault Power, switching to Honda in a move that the team hoped could help it consistently fight at the front, particularly given Honda's efforts in development with B-Team Toro Rosso. We've enjoyed a long and successful relationship with, uh, with Renault, culminating in eight world championships, over 150 podiums. Um, but we've decided that the time is right to make that next step in our journey as Red Bull Racing and move to a new uh, power unit supplier in Honda. We've had the privilege of seeing how they've progressed this year and uh, reached the conclusion that purely uh, for, for technical, technically driven reasons that this is the right move for the future of Aston Martin Red Bull Racing. And 2019 was a better year for Verstappen with a second consecutive home win for Red Bull at the Austrian Grand Prix, as well as victory in Germany and a handful of other podium finishes. And yet Red Bull still lagged behind as Mercedes duo Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas went 1-2 in the first five races on the way to another dominant season. Verstappen was more frequently battling the Ferraris for minor placings. It's a critical time for Verstappen, who has delivered on the hype that had him pitted as the driver of his generation. He's shown his caliber as a future F1 world champion, one who can win races he shouldn't, lifting the car and team beyond its limits. All Verstappen needs now is a car that can run consistently at the front of the pack, and his era will begin. One that will see furious celebrations from the grandstands as his Dutch supporters go wild, just as the Germans did during Michael Schumacher's tenure with Ferrari. The announcement of the return of the Dutch Grand Prix to the Formula One calendar for 2020, the first since 1985, gave Verstappen another race with the fans on his side. Red Bull Racing's improvements in 2019 were a huge boost for its partnership with Honda, including the Japanese power unit manufacturer's first rostrum visit since the 2008 British Grand Prix. And its first of the hybrid era, which is a huge achievement in light of the three-season nightmare Honda went through with McLaren on track before a messy divorce at the end of 2017. But Red Bull, while a more political animal than McLaren, has learned from past mistakes. Not only giving Honda enough space in the car, but also in not being critical in the media, saving face for the manufacturer, and focusing on what really matters, the collaboration. And I think also through the testing, uh, two weeks in, uh, in Barcelona, you know, the cooperation between Red Bull and, and, and Honda was, was going very smoothly and everybody knew exactly what they had to do and every, everybody was very focused on their job. So um, it was very interesting to see, but of course, you know, very happy that we could start in, in that way already. The result is, for now at least, a harmonious and so far successful pairing and one that Red Bull values. Its shared works deal, a privilege the squad believes is the only way back to title winning ways. There's huge motivation throughout the whole factory. This, this partnership with Honda has totally invigorated uh, the whole of the team. But there's still a long way to go in challenging for championships and overtaking the behemoth that the modern Mercedes team has become. The pressure is on because Verstappen's desire for glory is insatiable and if Red Bull can't deliver, there may well be a frenzy in the F1 paddock as frontrunners Mercedes and Ferrari try to sign him.
because Max Verstappen is that good. And his path to the top of Formula One and fulfilling those lofty early predictions seems inevitable. That's all for now, but join us next time for another Inside Line special, shining a light on the legends, rivalries, and moments that hold a special place in Formula One history.